My Facebook memories for April 10th, 2018 included this post from me. A heart scan last week indicated a possible blockage or other heart problem. I will have an angiogram late this morning. Your prayers are appreciated. Later that day, Debbie posted on my Facebook page, Tom is spending the night in the hospital following his angiogram this afternoon. They put in three stents, one in the front of the heart and two in the left. He also needs one or two stents on the right side of his heart, which will be done in about six weeks. Uh, thank you for your prayers and please keep sending them. One symptom that led to the heart scan, angiogram, and stents was a burning sen sensation in my left armpit when I tried to mow. Well, last week I began the 2022 mowing season. I'm happy to report a lack of heart symptoms. No burning in your armpit. <laughs> no. My first heart episode was over 30 years ago. The heart disease had been in the works for some time. You know it's important to take care of your heart. We only have the one. While the health of our physical heart is very important, we have another heart of greater importance. Scripture uses the word heart to refer to something other than our body's blood pump. In the Bible, the heart is considered the seat of life or strength. It means mind, soul, spirit, or one's entire emotional nature and understanding. It's important to understand that definition of heart as we read the numerous passages in Scripture that mention the heart. Most of them are not talking about the blood pump. <coughs> this evening, our text is 1 Kings chapter 11, verses 1 through 13. And here we have reference to the heart of Solomon. King Solomon, however, loved many foreign women besides Pharaoh's daughter. Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonians, and Hittites. They were from nations about which the Lord had told the Israelites, you must not intermarry with them, because they will surely turn your hearts after their gods. Nevertheless, Solomon held fast to them in love. He had 700 wives of royal birth and 300 concubines and his wives led him astray. As Solomon grew old, his wives turned his heart after other gods, and his heart was not fully devoted to the Lord his God, as the heart of David his father had been. He followed Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians, and Molech, the detestable god of the Ammonites. So Solomon did evil in the eyes of the Lord. He did not follow the Lord completely, as David his father had done. On a hill east of Jerusalem, Solomon built a high place for Shemosh, the detestable god of Moab, and for Molech, the detestable god of the Ammonites. He did the same for all his foreign wives who burned incense and offered sacrifices to their gods. The Lord became angry with Solomon because his heart had turned away from the Lord, the God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice. Although he had forbidden Solomon to follow other gods, Solomon did not keep the Lord's command. So the Lord said to Solomon, Since this is your attitude, and you have not kept my covenant and my decrees, which I commanded you, I will most certainly tear the kingdom away from you and give it to one of your subordinates. Solomon. What a great beginning Solomon had. He is the son of David. He would succeed David on the throne. Solomon is asked by the Lord, what do you want me to give you? And Solomon says, wisdom. God says, I will not only give you wisdom, I will give you great riches and all kinds of things. Solomon's reign began in a great way. One of the major accomplishments of his reign was the building of the temple. David had made the preparations. Solomon 
was able to construct it. He was able to dedicate the temple. As we read the verses before our text this evening, we see how Solomon was going in the wrong direction. Yes, he had great wisdom. People came from all over to ask him questions. He was able to give them good answers. But he was also doing what way too many kings have done. He was accumulating wealth for himself. It is an interesting statement when it said that silver was basically regarded as nothing. Everything was made of gold, or gold was what was valued. Silver was like stones. Solomon accumulated horses and chariots. He sent to Egypt for those horses, although the law of Moses had clearly said, don't do that. We see over and over again as the reign of Solomon progresses that he is disobeying God. One after another. He disobeys God. And when we come to this text, we find that it says his heart was turned away from God. Now, the warnings about marrying foreign women were very clear. Joshua chapter 23, verses 11 through 13. So be very careful to love the Lord your God. But if you turn away and ally yourself with the survivors of these nations that remain among you, and if you intermarry with them and associate with them, then you may be sure that the Lord your God will no longer drive out these nations before you. Instead, they will become snares and traps for you, whips on your backs and thorns in your eyes, until you perish from this good land which the Lord your God has given you. In Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 17, the warning is given that the king is not to take many wives. He must not take many wives or his heart will be led astray. He must not accumulate large amounts of silver and gold. Now, the command's pretty clear, aren't they? Here is what you must not do. Here is what you must do. And at the dedication of the temple, Part of Solomon's prayer even touches on one's relationship to God. He prays, may he turn our hearts to him, to walk in obedience to him and keep the commands, decrees, and laws he gave our ancestors. And also, and may your hearts be fully committed to the Lord our God, to live by his decrees and obey his commands, as at this time. <coughs> Solomon did not follow what he prayed. Now, I'm sure he was probably sincere when he prayed that prayer dedication. There have been, there's been many a person who had a good relationship with God. They were following Jesus faithfully, but they weren't careful. Satan is always looking for a way to get at us. And that's what Satan was doing with Solomon. Such a great beginning, such a sad ending in his life. In our text, Solomon loved many foreign women. What's the problem with loving a foreign woman? Well, in this time period, it was a big thing because with those foreign women came foreign gods. Every nation had a god. Some of them had more than one. The prohibition against marrying women from other nations, and it would also follow men from other nations, would be you're going to be tempted to worship the God of the one you marry. <clears throat> Solomon, as we have noted, had a great many wives and a great many concubines. Now, some of these were political marriages. I don't even know that he knew the name of all these women. But they did have an influence on him. They had their gods, their false gods. And they were influential to the extent that he built places of worship for their gods. And he ended up even worshiping their gods with them. 
All of these false gods were terrible. Some a bit more than others, perhaps. There was human sacrifice involved in some. But here is a man who had been given great wisdom, who exercised that great wisdom for a while. <clears throat> but influences led him astray. So much so that he did not follow the Lord completely as his father had done. No, he had divided loyalties among many gods. And God will not be one God among many. <clears throat> I will be your only God, God says. We are not surprised that the Lord became angry with Solomon. He became angry because his heart turned away from God. God had even appeared to Solomon twice. He had such unique opportunities. He had been forbidden to follow other gods. But Solomon didn't keep the Lord's command. And so, God says to Solomon, because you have not followed me faithfully as your father did, I'm going to take the kingdom away from you. I'm not going to do it in your lifetime because of your father David. But after you, the kingdom is going to be divided. For the sake of your father David, your lineage will have one tribe left. What a great beginning. What a sad outcome in life. How is it with us? How do we live? We must always take great care. What does God require of us? The question was asked to Jesus, what is the great command? And Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. With all your heart. God must be number one in our life. Maybe that's an inadequate statement. God must be all in our life. There are so many things that would take our heart away from God. So many things pulling on us in all kinds of directions. Some of them even seem like good things. But anything that keeps us from being committed to God to the service of Jesus Christ is a danger. So we must always take care of our heart. And that is our spiritual heart. Solomon was punished. His lineage was punished because of his apostasy. <clears throat> God's anger was totally justifiable. God is holy. He does not allow sin to go unpunished. We must avoid the sin of apostasy, the sin of lukewarmness, the sin of just getting involved in things that don't matter. And we must keep our hearts toward God, in tune with God. 